want to talk about comfort zones and how imprinted and programmed we are to think who we are. How as children in a family dynamic, it can be from a family of two, four, six or eight, and each child will be labeled a certain way. One child will be considered the beautiful one. One child will be considered the smart one. One child will be considered a handful, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How we grow up to believe those things about ourselves. I realized a long time ago, but still never stepped out of the patterns and really realized a few months ago how the voices in my head are not my own. I don't think I'm stupid. I don't think I'm a bad mother. I do not think that I'm a responsible adult. I'm not ashamed of myself because I haven't had a job in the last two years like a fully functioning adult, Michelle. I know exactly what I've lived in the last two years and why I've made the choices that I've made. Yet these voices in my head are the imprints of the people that love me the most that tell me these things to my face or write them down and text them to me randomly. How? Some of the most beautiful, and I mean beautiful, gorgeous, handsome men in this world were told since childhood they were a nerd or they had a certain feature on their face and teased and bullied about it. How these men and women humans, we grow up and we believe that we have a big nose, even if we've grown completely into it. And it was just the thing. And it is still the thing in some families to make fun of somebody's nose, make fun of somebody's teeth, make fun of somebody's cheekbones, weight, lisps, mannerisms. How when we allow ourselves to meet new people in life and allow new people to imprint us with seeing our face and speaking how we speak, how that soul family tribe vibe is what it is. When you've been told your whole fucking life a certain thing about your facial features or your habits, or the fact that you were so smart that you were considered a nerd, when actually being a nerd is the most amazing thing in this world, it means you're smart, it means you have a fetish or a passion for something and you're, you excel at it. For me, if I use that word, it's like the ultimate compliment. Right? It is. I consider myself a word nerd. I've been laughed at by people my whole life because I loved Shakespeare. I didn't have to be told to read Shakespeare. I bought the fucking Bible brick, still have it in my living room today. You know what I mean? I've toned down the way I talk my whole life. I still do because I love the syllables of swear words. Because for me, I'm French, so saying the F word is not actually a swear word in Quebec. To use the word tabarnak or esti in Quebec is a swear word that can trigger people. But if you can, children in Quebec use the F word because it's not considered a swear word, right? So the syllables that each society uses and considers good or bad, if you're in another society, it's the opposite. Fuck 
is actually a seal in French, spelled P-H, not F, but pronounced fuck. So you're in grade school learning French or at home learning French and a seal, if you're by the ocean, sit there fuck. The imprints that we have from the people that birthed us, that we grew up with, are the things that we need to step out of. That's where strangers become family. Some families didn't do this, right? So some people don't have those imprints to step out of. They've been cherished, they've been loved. Their wounds are different. Strangers imprinted them with yucky stuff. Because everybody in this whole wide planet, it don't matter who you are, has been bullied, has been lied to by someone, somewhere. Shakira was told she sang like a goat. Yet, around the world, she's known and she's a singer. Certain actresses were told they had zero talent, that they could never be cast in Hollywood, such as Meryl Streep. And she's been acting for generations now, for years. I use those examples because they're like, you know, in our face. It's so like, whoa, right? Because even someone from the 20 year old age range right now will know of, you know, Cher, who also was ridiculed for her face, her tone, her original voice. No matter how we want to see, you know, COVID is bad. It was brought into our reality through our collective timeline for all of the world, this realm, whether you think it's round or flat, or you think it's a simulation or not, collectively, we all agreed to bring forth this timeline so that individuals would step into their best self embodiment. In the last two years, people have had the choice point of so many things. COVID has brought uh, the visibility of the rich and the poor. People who have a certain amount of money don't feel that they were affected by COVID. Why? Because they just shopped online. They just did their little things at home in different ways, right? Many families that I've heard about, they remodeled half their basement to be a schoolroom. They had the means to an end to make their house so comfortable and change everything financially, like use their money that they didn't like suffer through COVID. And some of them consider that they did because having to spend time with their children has been their worst fucking nightmare. <laughs> yeah. People don't all have children because they actually want to raise them. They have children because it's what people do, right? We finish high school, we go to university, we meet somebody, we fall in love, we buy a house, we have children. And then, well, it's five o'clock somewhere. I need wine in order to be able to stand my children. I was sitting on some benches at a skate park two years ago, a year and a half ago, midsummer, first year of COVID, listening to people talk other parents and you know the moms that knew each other and one mom said like oh my gosh I've never drank so much in my whole life we drink like way more now it's really hard having the kids at home and you just you know we drink a lot and I looked at her and I was like whoa that's funny I hardly ever drank since COVID started I'm alone with my daughter so I only once in a while, 
allow myself to drink because there's nobody else in the house. And it's not because I binge drink, but it's just because I'm drinking. I can't just grab keys to the car if anything happens and drive. There's nobody with me, you know. Again, it's not because I binge drink or because I'm afraid something's going to happen to me. But if anything happens around us, if my daughter hurts herself, if she wakes up and she has a stomach ache, because it is COVID times, if she wakes up and she's sick and like has a fever and I would need to go to the hospital, I would have to wait till I was sober. And she looked at me and I was like, as well, it's like I've changed my whole life. I don't go out at night after dark. There's men with masks everywhere now. They think it's normal. I don't think it's normal. She's like, whoa, I never thought of all that. I was like, of course you didn't. If you need something at the store, you send your man. Or you just go and he stays with your kids. She's like, yeah. I never thought what it was like for someone else who's alone. I was like, you know, we live in a world where two years, like a year ago, this was whatever. If we would have been in a store and somebody came in with a mask, a hoodie and sunglasses, we would have just been in the back of the store and called 911 automatically. We wouldn't have even given the person a chance to say to the cashier, I'm holding you up. We would have just called the fucking police. But now, especially in the north in winter, there's only a certain few precious hours of daylight. At 4.30, it's dark. And you got grown-ass men wearing a hoodie, sunglasses, and a mask that walk into stores. And this is so normal that people are not even phased by it anymore. And I was like, I still am. I have to be on guard. I don't have somebody at my side in case it's that one time of a holdup. I don't have somebody that's like with me in case that person wants to follow me to my car and I can't even identify them later if something happened to me. I hate speaking of certain of my shit openly because I just want to honor my family and just like, I don't, you know, but there's parts of me that have to share it first to get it out of me, but second, because it can help somebody else to understand you're not the only one, baby. I've been telling my family, you're not listening to me of what me, what my timeline here is in the city. Housing prices have gone up so high that it, unless I had somebody to rent a house with, I, I can't move into the country. You know, I can't just find somewhere else, Michelle. Just find somewhere else. Manifest yourself another place. Crime rate has gone up in ways that is the people next door. When I would speak to the lady who lived there her whole life, she was 50 as well. And she said, I've lived here in this house my whole life. It was my mom's house and we bought it. It's our house now. Just like I check out my window before I go to my car every day when I leave for work. And before I exit my car to get to my door, I make sure there's nothing and no one around me anymore. She's like, I, I never did that the whole time I grew up, no matter how there could have been sporadic incidents of people stealing stuff in the neighborhood and, you know, people walking around that we don't know. She's like, I never did that in my life before. Ever. Ever. How? I chose from before I had even given birth to Lily Rose that I was going to homeschool her no matter what the circumstances of this world were or who was in my life. She's 10 now. And I still do that. And I unschool her. So that's even more controversial because we're not curriculum based and she's not in a bunch of other programs. One of the reasons 
that she's not doing like dance or gymnastics is because I ain't got the money, honey. And the other reason is that even if I had the money right now, the last two years have been like in and out. People paid for stuff, but then either got refunded or fuck you. We had two lessons, mandate came in, you're not getting your money back. Everything I do is legal in this province. That's why I chose this province to live in. It's legal to homeschool and it's legal to free range, no curriculum, no matter what age your child is. And I'm so judged and fucking ridiculed for that that it makes no fucking sense to me. I've been telling my family for years and I have an education background. Yeah, I didn't finish my diploma, but I still did all the fucking work. And I've researched my whole life. I've been around children my whole life. Every man that I ever had in my life was dyslexic. So I know dyslexia from the ground up. And I've been telling my family that my daughter will unblock that research has shown, and when kids are allowed to learn on their own without being <clears throat> a certain way, that their mind just naturally gravitates to being able to understand certain things at around the timeline of 10 years old. How many kids grew up into adults or kids that are in school now is the hardest thing that they do. They cry before they go to school, guys. Some masculine I know are still wounded because they feel they're not smart, because they still have problems reading, because the imprinting of them being told how stupid they fucking were when they were little, they still believe that about themselves now. Emily Rose has completely been flourishing in the last months of just reading and writing. Yet that's still not enough for people to not be imprinting us with the fact that we're not normal. We're not doing everything the way other people do. But how does that make sense when in the world right now, many families throughout the last years of COVID have began to homeschool. Not because they had to keep going, they chose to keep going. They realized that, whoa, our family is way happier. I'm way happier with my kids at home. I don't want my kids going to school wearing a mask. I definitely don't want the threat of them like having to be vaccinated. And they realize like, wow, I trust myself. I enjoy having my kids. Instead of having children and putting them in a system and believing that somebody else is going to teach them better than them. The school system evolved from people believing that if they learned on their own, then they were uneducated. But it's not school that taught me certain things. It's me. I only had a handful of teachers, not even two or three teachers in my whole life who actually, whoa, taught me something instead of bullying me into fucking learning something the way that they wanted me to because the curriculum said so. We have everything at our fingertips. We don't even have to go to a library and get an encyclopedia. You want to know what a word means? Look it up. You want to know how to do something? You can do anything. The only thing you can't fix yourself is anything that's got like computers in it. Like your cars these days. Start with a push button. 
that stall on the street fucking corner at a red light. And some people have the money to invest in the stuff that they need to fix those fucking computer things, right? You can run a car on water. <laughs> if you know how to do it manually. There's free technology knowledge everywhere. If you know how to do it. If you have the parts. If you have the mindset or the hands to be able to do what needs to be done. Nothing of what we're labeled as is impossible for us to not learn if that's a part of what our journey is. All my life, I thought my only gift was to be able to cook. I didn't think I could do other things. Yet when I allow myself to do other things, holy shit. You know, people tell me I'm an artist all the time. Okay, that's still just a label. You know? Well, yeah, I am. It's so easy for me to speak in front of people that I could bounce from doing live streams to speaking in front of a million people and I wouldn't be shivering in my timbers, eh? Not at all. And it wouldn't even be from a speech that was handed to me to be said like a puppet. It would be ad-libbed. I'm not good at memorizing stuff and retaining things. I'm still good at doing it manually. I'm the worst when I had my restaurant. I always had chef to train somebody. Why? Because it just comes naturally to me. So explaining step by step to somebody who's never done something before, like watch me, watch me Lococo, learn. But me explaining it, oh baby, I'm not the best at that. You know? Anyways, I've done, gone on, rambled on, bounced from one thing to the other. Why? Because it's how I speak. People who understand or need the seed and what I say to sprout inside of them, they get it. And other people will look and pass through and watch a hole, whatever 20 minutes it's gonna show up, and be like, what the fuck is she talking about, man? But that's the thing. If you don't understand what I'm talking about and I don't resonate with you, why did you spend 20 fucking minutes watching me? Because <laughs> something's going to be planted for later. That's for sure. You know what I mean? You might not get it now, but you'll get it in five minutes, five days, five years, on your deathbed maybe. Oh, that's what that fucking chick was talking about that time. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm gonna full circle with where do you put your energy? If you think I'm a fucking freak and you, st you spend your time watching me just so you can crank yourself up of like, what's she saying today? You could have done something else all this time. But you watched me instead. That makes no fucking sense. Not to me anyways. People send me videos all the time. I don't watch that fucking stuff. Unless I'm guided to it. Because it's got to fucking, like, rock my crank. I don't fucking watch a movie. I don't owe a movie to watch it just because I started it. I got a ten minute rule. And if I don't, I don't even last ten minutes sometimes. Damn. I ain't watched even a handful of movies in the last two years. Because why would I distract myself watching a fucking movie just to sit there and say, like, Oh, I watched this. I did this last night. I did that. I don't have to justify what I fucking did. With a label of watching a movie. Anyways, he's done.